Hey guys, so tonight I'm here to talk about John Dies at the End by David Wong. Um, I just finished the book today, and almost immediately after finishing the book, I went and I watched the movie version, which was actually just released theatrically on January 25th of this year. Um, unfortunately, it's only playing in two cities, which I believe are Los Angeles and New York City, but very conveniently it is also available through many on-demand sites like Amazon and iTunes and Comcast. So the purpose of this video is for me to talk about both the book and the movie, the differences between the two, and what I thought of both of them. So um, I will do my best to try and keep this as spoiler-free as possible, although there are certain things that if I'm going to talk about both the book and the movie, I've got to mention, so just keep that in mind when watching the video. Got it? Okay, strap yourselves in, kitties. Okay, so if I was to sit here and try and give you a really quick rundown of the plot of John Dies at the End, it's really pretty impossible, but I'm going to give it a shot anyway. Okay, so David Wong, who is the pen name, the, the author whose real name I can't remember. You know me in names. I'm really, really sorry, but he is um, the editor over at crack.com. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> the pen name of David Wong is also the narrator of the story, and it sort of opens with him meeting with this journalist named Arnie, who he's going to tell his story to. Um, he's going to tell him about these adventures that he has with his friend John, and if I was trying to find something to compare the partnership between Dave and John, it would be like the brothers from Supernatural. Um, it's the closest thing I can come to. Although, in my experience, and granted I haven't watched that many episodes of Supernatural, but um, yeah, the stuff that Arnie and Dave get into is far crazier than anything that's ever happened on that show. But um, So the main crux of this story that he tells Arnie is all of these things that happen because of this drug which is called soy sauce um, and it's this very frightening looking substance that's black and moves and almost looks like it's alive and when you ingest it you have this very strong reaction strong put it is very it's putting it very mildly um, you start hallucinating and as John puts it you start remembering things that haven't happened yet and, um, yeah, so he tells Arnie this, this story about all of these things that sort of happened because of this drug and their, um, uh, the effects of what happened after they encountered this drug. This book was, in a nutshell, 500 pages of crazy. Um, it is the craziest, most insane, bizarre book I have ever read in my life, but is also one of the best books I've ever read in my life. It was one of the most enjoyable, craziest, and I need to stop saying crazy, um, <laughs> entertaining, funny reading experiences I've ever had. And I, in one of my updates on Goodreads, I said that I was, you know, trying to read this extra slow so I could make it last because I just, I just loved being inside this fucked up world. <laughs> um, there's so much going on, and I mean, like I said, it's almost 500 pages. There's like stories inside of plots and plots inside of stories, and it jumps around from different time periods, and there's a lot, a lot going on. And I, to say that I was confused at times is putting it mildly, but they still manage to explain just about everything by the end of the book. And there were periods there where I was really thinking, I'm not going to know what the hell happened at the end of this book because there's so many things left unanswered. But by the end of the book, amazingly enough, he had pretty much answered just about every question. Um, yeah, so I loved the book. It's on my favorite shelf on Goodreads. And I can't, read, can't wait to read the second book, which is called This Book is Full of Spiders. Um, Moving on to the movie version, and this is where it's going to get a little spoilery, so just remember that. Um, okay, so considering how long the book was and the fact that this movie was only an hour and a half long, you have to figure a lot of stuff is going to end up being left out, which I knew going into it. However, saying that, some of the things they left out, 
some of the things they changed kind of pissed me off. Um, one of the main things, which makes no sense to me at all, one of the main characters in the book is the dog Molly. I mean, he's like basically the third lead character besides Dave and John when you come right down to it. And he, the, the, the dog was in the, was in the movie, but they changed its name from Molly to Barkley. Bark Lee. Two words. I don't get it. I don't understand why they went so far as to change the dog's name. It's, it's a small issue, but it bugged me nonetheless. Um, there were characters that were important to the, the story, um, at least for the first half of the book, that were completely left out of the movie. Um, the character of Jennifer Lopez, not the actress, um, she wasn't even in the movie. And she was a main character for the first half. Um, the whole relationship between um, Dave and the character of Amy, trying not to spoil anything, but in the movie it kind of just came out of nowhere. You know, they met at the beginning, and then it seemed like they were a couple the next time they are introduced in the movie. And I'm like... Where is this coming from? And I know, personally, if I had watched the movie before reading the book, I'd be like, what? How do they even know each other? They met one time for like two minutes. Um, yeah, so that was annoying and kind of um, exasperating, I guess. Um, also, the fact that they made Marconi a bigger character than he ended up being in the book, and the version of him in the movie is really fucking annoying. Yeah, I didn't like that either. <laughs> I don't like the fact that they didn't go to Vegas in the movie. I'm just, I'm, yeah. The way I'm talking about it makes it sound like I hated the movie. Actually, I quite liked it. <laughs> Some, I know it doesn't sound like it, but I did. I actually really liked it. And a lot of people have said this, and I think I, I probably agree, agree with them if I had seen the movie, with the exception of the thing I said about um, the Dave and Amy relationship. If I had seen the movie before I read the book, I probably would have ended up liking it more because I wouldn't have been sitting there nitpicking every little thing that I that was different from the book. But yeah, um, I actually really liked the casting, especially of the characters of Dave and John. Um, I think they uh, were extremely... <laughs> uh, what's the word? They were kind in the casting because the actors who play the characters, especially Chase Williamson, who plays Dave look nothing like the way they're described in the book. They're much more attractive than um, the characters are described in the book. But I think they did a really good, great job. I believe that that's who they were. So, um, yeah. So, I, you know, I, I, I was really happy for the first hour of the movie because it seemed like they were staying really close to the book and even right down to actual, the actual dialogue. Um, but like I said, considering it was so long, the movie would have had to have been like six hours to fit everything in. But... Yeah, so, anyway, the book, six stars, six huge stars, absolutely loved it, and um, it is a, you know, it's a mishmash of a bunch of different genres, you know, it's like, it's a comedy, it's a mystery, it's a buddy picture, you know, it's a buddy story, um, and it's a horror novel, there are some gross out moments, there are several gross out moments actually. Um, but I highly, highly, highly recommend it to anybody who's not that squeamish. I'll put it that way. Yes. Um, <laughs> there's so many things I want to say, but I, like I said, I tried to keep this as spoiler-free as possible. But yes, give it a try, people. It's such a good book, and if you just go into it with an open mind, I guarantee you will at least enjoy the ride, if not understand everything that's going on. Yeah. Um, as far as the movie goes, I would probably give it a three and a half star rating. Um, yeah. So it was good. I enjoyed it. Um, I think it was a decent adaptation of a really, really, really difficult to adapt book, if that makes any sense. So yeah. Anyway, that's about it. Um, <laughs> this video probably is all over the place but if you guys have any questions or anything like that leave me a comment show me some love and as always until next time people happy reading